Hey, what's up, everybody? Just wanted to go through the updates from Eleventy last week. Uh, first up, we had a documentation improvement on the Getting Started page. Had a good conversation about what happens when you get to the end of this very uh, beginner tutorial. Um, and we added this new section, Continue Learning, where you can go to the CLI usage. Uh, you can try another tutorial that we have listed on the site, try a starter project. Then we have some really good uh, community resources and tutorials here linked up. I think that will be a better entry point for beginners um, because previously it just took you to the CLI and uh, that wasn't as helpful as it could be. So some improvements there. Um, we have a new docs page describing environment variables, how to use them, how to set them up, what they're used for. Um, yep, so check that out. Cross-platform, Mac OS, Windows, PowerShell, all that stuff. Uh, and then we also have some use case ideas listed here, how you can speed up your builds using environment variables, and then a section about 11 supplied environment variables, which is new in 1.0. Uh, we also have a new docs page for deployment. So after you've built an 11 site, what do you do with it? You want to put it on the web, right? Um, this was conspicuously missing from our documentation before, um, and now we have it. Yay! Um, so you can check it out, how to use an NPM script to run your Eleven D build, and then of just a bunch of different providers. Um, I did want to mention that Netlify is a sponsor of Eleven D, or sponsoring me to work on it full time, and they were super supportive of this page and having as many uh, providers listed here as we can get. Um, so yeah, I thought that was a, a really great uh, supportive vibe that I got from Netlify on there. Uh, we also worked with Vercel to get some of our um, metadata and uh, licensing restored when, if you do a Vercel init command on their CLI. Um, so yeah, look for that if you're using Vercel init. Uh, we added a the special .github repo to add a uh, sort of a readme to our organization page on GitHub, and it just kind of shows you almost like a dashboard using all these uh, different shield badges um, to show you all of our big repos, the issues that we have, outstanding pull requests, outstanding. Um, so yeah, check that out if you go to the 11D org on GitHub. Uh, I also did some work to sync all of our different GitHub issues across all of our different repos. Uh, if you want to check that out, I just put the script into this also in into a folder inside of this .github uh, repo on the 11D org. Uh, so if you're interested in that, if you're having that problem where all of your labels are kind of getting out of sync, I used uh, Financial Times uh, GitHub label sync uh, package to do that. Um, and it lets you drive it from a YAML file, which is, I think, really great. Uh, we had a big new version of 11D image come out. It upgrades Sharp um, from 0.29 to 0.30, which adds GIF, GIF support, animated GIF, GIF support, animated WebP support. Um, so if you've had trouble with using 11D image with GIF, GIFs, uh, check that out. We had some great bug fixes for absolute file paths on Windows. Uh, and another long-standing one when um, XIF metadata on the images showed some orientation. Um, some of the images would come out rotated. Uh, and so we have some great fixes around that. The images will show up correctly now uh, when they have metadata associated, or EXIF metadata associated for orientation. Um, we also have an enhancement queue if you want to check it out and vote on your features. Uh, that's linked up in the GitHub release. Uh, we renamed 11D cache assets to 11D fetch. So I have heard some feedback from beginners and people new to 11D that they didn't really understand that 11D cache assets was really just a light wrapper around fetch, around node fetch. Um, and I think it was important to rename this because it improves the discoverability of the utility um, and it should help beginners moving forward. And with that, we did ship a new major version of the plugin um, that does change the algorithm to um, generate the cache file names. So you won't be able to reuse your cache from the V2 of the plugin to V3 um, because we got some bug fixes with that as well. Um, we changed the verbose option, uh, switched it to D 
to false by default, so you won't see any console logs when you're making remote um, URL fetches anymore. If you want to switch that back on, just change it to true. And we also added a format URL for display option. Um, if you want to make the URLs more friendly on the command line, you can use that callback to do that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, on the docs for the fetch slash cache assets plugin, um, we added a new example uh, running this on your build server for Netlify specifically if you want to reuse your cache folders across builds. Um, should save you some build minutes. Um, so yeah, if you want to do that, I enabled it for a few of my repos and it works great. Um, yep, it will allow you to save some API calls uh, if you're doing a lot of builds successfully. And some build minutes as well. Uh, one question that I've been kind of thinking about in the last couple of days was, um, so we did this rename, cache, ass cache assets to fetch, uh, shipped a new version, new file names in your .cache folder. Um, so Elevity Image also uses this under or behind the scenes. Um, so I'm leaning towards shipping a new version of Elevity Image just to make it super clear a new major version, excuse me, of Lemony Image, just to make it super clear that the cache uh, file algorithm changed and your old um, cache assets won't be valid with this upgrade. I felt like it was not like a super breaking change, but it did feel breaking enough that uh, it, I feel like it's important to ship a major version of Lemony Image just to make that very clear. Uh, there won't be any API changes, any breaking API changes, um, but you will lose your old cache files. And then just looking at the pulse um, core for the last week, uh, the website, 11D image was kind of the big one. We closed a lot of issues there, um, moves a lot of things into the enhancement queue. I think we had about 50 images closed across these four repos, 11D fetch as well, and uh, 12 PRs closed last week. So a lot of progress. We're still working, fo moving forward. Uh, I think the the big uh, outstanding thing on my mind still right now is those browser sync npm audits. Um, now there isn't any like production uh, risk, any production risk associated with those npm audits because we don't actually even bundle the browser sync um, package in serverless mode. Um, but I do feel like it's uh, important to, especially from for a beginner standpoint, they don't want to install Levity and get those npm high security audits from the from the beginning. So I do think we will be uh, starting the process to strip out browser sync from core um, moving forward, and stay tuned for more news on that. All right, thanks, y'all.